an aking matupa. Pagkatulong ulit na kinanong siya ni Jesus, Si mo, anak ni Juan, iniibig mo makaw, mo ba ako? Lanungkol si Pedro, sa pagkat makaitlo siya ang kinanong, iniibig mo ba ako? At sumagot siya, Panginoon, dalama po ninyo ang lahat na bagay, dalama ninyo iniibig mo ko ako. Sinabi ka, sinabi sa kanya ni Jesus, pagkain mo ang aking matuba. Tandaan mo noong kabataan mo ba, ikaw ang nagbibigis sa inyo sarili at lumalakad ka kung saan mo hindi. Gunik patanda mo, yung unat mo ang iyong magkamay at iba ang magbibigis sa kisayo at tatalhin ka kung saan hindi mo ibig. Sinabi niya ito upang ipakilala kung paano mamamatay si Pedro at sa kayo'y kapalangkala niya ang Diyos. Pagkatapos sinabi sa kanya ni Yesus, sumunod ka sa akin. Mga kapatid kay Kristo, ang mabuting balita ng Panginoon Yesu Kristo. Pinupore ka namin, Panginoong Yesu Kristo. We have to obey the Lord. 
And he told us to go and to preach the good news in everywhere. Amen. Amen. Jesus is alive. Amen. Amen. Christ is risen. He is today with us, among us, as he was these three days after his resurrection with his disciples. He prepared for white fish and bread of the charcoal. As he is preparing for us today a meal, the same, even better one, because he is offering us his body. Amen. So he is calling us today, come, eat. Don't be afraid. Don't be shy. Don't be sad. That's why when we are participating in the Eucharist, every Eucharist, is Christ's resurrection, the memorial of his death and resurrection. <laughs> Amen. So don't be sad. Do you have joy in your heart? Yes. Yeah. So show it. Manifest it. Be witnesses of Christ's resurrection. But you know, I have to comment this with sadness. I couldn't feel your joy when you sing Papuri. Papuri is <laughs> Oh, where is the joy? Do you really believe that Jesus is alive? So you have to sing Papuri is Amen? Be happy. God is with us. Who can be against us? Amen? The same thing that happened to Peter and John. They were happy. Even to suffer for the sake of Jesus. You know, suffering is something very bad, unbearable. When the sickness is touching us, or suffering, we are sad. We don't have any will to praise God. It's normal. It's normal. We are not masochists. I suppose. I don't want to suffer. I don't know about you. I don't want to suffer. But when I am suffering, I know that I am not alone. Because God is with us. He suffered before me and before you. So when we pray, we complain to God, Lord, why I need to suffer? Why me? Did the Lord ask? In front of Pilate, why me? When he was sentenced to death, did he ask, why me? No. Because he knew and he accepted the will of his father willingly. Amen. Because of love for you, for me, for all of us, sinners. He did not say, okay. I can suffer for those who are good because at least they love me. I will not suffer for the sinners. No. On the contrary, he said, it is not those who are healthy who need a doctor. It is the sick. And I came to those, he said. Amen. Amen. In today's gospel, we have the first time Jesus visiting his disciples after the resurrection. If you remember when, when the first meeting with Mary the Magdalene on the way, when she was visiting the tomb to anoint the body of Jesus, Jesus said, Go, tell my brothers to go to Galilee. They will see me there. Okay, in the same day in the evening, Jesus visited them in the closed room. But after, they went to Galilee. This is a very, very meaningful. Because where in Galilee, every took the beginning, everything started. We have something very beautiful in this Gospel of St. John. You know, St. John Gospel is not synoptical. John is different because he is a theologian. He has a special purpose of his gospel. Amen? Amen. 
That's why in the Gospel of St. Matthew, Luke and Mark, you may see the disciples in Galilee and Jesus calling them, the fishermen, to leave their boats and to follow him. Also Peter. But here in the Gospel of John, no. It is only today, after the resurrection, after asking Peter three times, do you love me? At the end of this gospel, what we heard? Come, follow me. Only in the gospel of St. John, Peter is called at the end, because Jesus needed to be sure that he is choosing the right person. Okay, there are a lot of symbolic meanings in this gospel. First of all, the disciples go back to fishing. They are in Galilee waiting for the Lord, as he said, he's going to meet them there. But it seems that they are losing their patience. So what do they do? Again, from the vision of people, after following Jesus for three years, they never needed to fish again. Now, what they are doing? They are going back to their profession. They are going to fish again. And the other disciples already acknowledge Peter as a leader. So what do they say? We go with you. So they go. And they were fishing all night. Did they find any fish? Did they caught any fish? No. This is also very meaningful. Night. Each one of us is experiencing the night of our spiritual life. When we got nothing, we even lose our faith like the disciples. We experience abandonment like Jesus in Gethsemane, like Jesus on the cross. But there is a hope in the morning. They notice someone who is asking them, Friends, did you cut anything? No, no sir. Put your nets at the right side of the boat. Wow. Did you ever think about this? You know that the boat mm. is symbolizing what? The church. The boat symbolizes the church. Those who are inside the boat, those who are inside the church are saved. Amen. Amen. We are saved to the sacraments, to the redemption of Jesus. We are saved. But we have to work for our salvation. Don't take it for granted. Because Jesus died for us, he rose from the dead. I can commit sins because I go to heaven. No. We have to work for our salvation. Jesus gave us freedom to choose. So, let us choose wisely. Let us pray the Holy Spirit to give us the gift of discernment to make the right choices in our life. Amen. 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 So we experience the night of our life, spiritual life, of our faith, of our belonging to Jesus. Maybe like the disciples, we are ashamed of him because he abandoned us. But this person, and they don't recognize him yet, even by the voice, like Mary the Magdalene, she recognized the master when he called her man. She said, Rabbi, the disciples know. They cannot see clearly and they cannot understand. So that person is asking them to put the nets on the right side of the boat. 